Hey, it's Random Code here, and today we're going to continue working on our full stack crude application. And in the last video, I now have a system where we have a Docker database connected to a Spring Boot application. And last time we created our first endpoint, so a slash user to get a user by ID, or slash users to get a list of all users. So just showcase quickly slash user by ID, we get Hans, our single user. And we get our list of users, which is now just as Hans. So the next logical step is that we would actually like to insert some new users. So I already created all this functionality and we're just going to go through it. And let me actually just showcase it works. So now we have a new REST endpoint. Again, same localhost 8080 called now slash create user. We then need to pass a body to this post call. And this body is going to be a raw json string or just a text containing json which is going to make it very easy later on when we then have a json user in the front end we then simply pass it as a body to this endpoint to save the user to the system so we now pass the name hans an email and a status i can then send this to my create user endpoint and as we see here it will then return the id of the newly created user and we get a status 200, okay, which means the user's inserted. So we can now go back either to get user by ID, check the ID we were just given. So we can see that now it's a Hans as well, oh, and the second Hans. And we now have a Hans with ID 1 and a Hans with ID 2. And we can then very quickly in here update, let's do a Leah, for example. And let's update her email as well. And her status is not going to be okay. It's going to be, I don't know. Not okay. For now, the status is just a text string and doesn't really mean anything. But later on, we need to do some kind of correction and to ensure the status is actually what we'd like it to be. But for now, we can just send this, get an ID 3, go back to the list, and we now also have Leah. So it works. But how do we actually achieve this functionality? So let's actually start from the, from the top. So we last time created a get mapping for our users. To get our users, we now have a post mapping. And just to understand that in REST APIs, we're using get when we would like to retrieve some information, and post, we would like to save some information. And later on, we're going to use put as well when we'd like to update some information. So we have our post mapping, create user, and it's going to be returning a response entity with an integer. So, and this integer, as we just saw, is going to be the ID of the created user. We then take in as an input at HTTP entity of type string, which is going to be our body, our raw body. So this is technically just a string, but we're then shortly going to be converting it into an object. We would then like our, we then do a bunch of stuff, but let's actually first showcase that before we just had a user entity inside our persistence, which maps directly to the entity in the database. I have now also created a user model, which is a entity or an object similar to the input. So this model object maps to the input from the user here. And they seem very similar, but it's just simpler creating a second model because we're not adding an ID here. And we are then actually going to be mapping shortly this user to a user entity and then send the user entity to the database. So let's just actually go through the workflow, use controller. We then have an optional, which is just an object that might contain a user entity or not. And we then have this optional user entity insertion success. So if the user was inserted, we're going to be returning the user entity. We then say for now, the user ID has not been defined because we don't know if the user has been successfully inserted. And the status code is going to be conflict as long as nothing has been inserted. If the insertion was successful, so if the user entity has been returned, so we would then simply extract our user ID and extract our status and then return our response entity. So what this actually just does very simply is if there's no user inserted, return user ID null and status conflict. If a user has been inserted, change the user ID to the actual user ID that was inserted and status to OK. And this HTTP entity is then sent to our user service. And if we then just simply 
jump into our insert new user in our user service, we can see also, as I've been talking about it before, that now the user service is actually doing something instead of before it's just like sending or retrieving data directly from a user repository. Our user service now takes in our user HTTP entity. We then again, I like using optional, so we would often start with an empty optional and saying, was the user actually inserted? It isn't at this point, so our optional is going to be empty. We're then going to map our user JSON, because this is going to be containing the user JSON from here. And we then simply create a method. I simply just go JSON to user model, which takes in our string JSON user JSON. I'm then using an object mapper. Uh, this object mapper comes from Jackson. Uh, this object mapper, and just very simply, if possible, maps our JSON user string to a user.class. So it simply sees if it is possible to map our name, email, status to our user model class. So this one, name, email, status. And what it actually does is it creates a user's first uh, empty constructor, creates an empty object, and then it uses our set method. So it sets the names, set the email, and set the status. So interestingly enough, even though inside our user model, we can see these are showing that they're not being called, they're never used, they actually are behind the scenes, so we need them anyway. So now we are at a point where, if possible, our JSON have been converted to a user. And once again, we're using our optionals. So if this isn't possible, we're going to be turning an empty optional. So then we simply check if our user from ACC body is present. So if we actually have a user, so if our input from the post call here has been mapped to a user, we now create a new user entity because that is the format we're representing to the database. And we then just very simply map our user to a user entity. We simply just go through, get our username to our user entity, email to user entity, that is our user entity, just very simply. Let's create a small helper method to make it a bit cleaner. We then have our user entity, our new user. We then simply go user repository dot save new user. This will then either return a null or a returned user. So if it is inserted, it also return the user, which is why we actually are able to get the ID, even though the IDs are created in the database. So we send an user with just email, name, and status. It is then saved to the database. And there's a bunch of checks we need to do probably to have to actually validate our data and to ensure, for example, that the name is a name, the email is an email, but so on. But for now, we're just going to have a very simple setup where we just send everything and we just assume it's correct. Later on, we're going to do some refactoring where we can actually check that everything is as expected. But for now, we just assume as long as a user is present, it's going to be able to send it to the database and everything's going to be fine. And we then have our inserted user, our returned user. And we're then going to change our inserted user to be an optional of our returned user. So in case where the user is present, we send the user to the database. And we then very simply just return an optional of this returned user. And as we just saw in the user controller, this returned user is then used to say if it is present, get the ID and get the status code. Obviously, there's some mistakes here that it might end up in a situation where the user repository, where all these checks actually succeeds, but something fails in the database. So the returned user here is going to be null. We're then going to be returning a null which is present, and then we're going to have some errors here where we're calling get ID by the null object. But for now, I'm not going to worry about that stuff. We'll handle all these edge cases later. But for now, this is the setup. We are now able to, as we saw before, get users. We can now also create a new user. And I know there's quite a few steps. We're now using a different model. We're mapping stuff back and forward to make everything a bit easier and a bit simpler. And it might be a bit confusing. And as always, I'm going to push this to my GitHub repository, where I highly recommend you actually have a look at it yourself. Because even though I tried my best to explain how everything works, it's, it's a bit, um, it, it can be a bit complicated at this point, where we're now mapping between also because there's a bunch of steps of going from JSON to a user model to a user entity.
sending it to the database, returning another user entity, and then returning the ID of this newly created user entity. But we are now further in our full stack goals. We can now get users. We can insert users. And that's very much just what I want to showcase in this video today. So I hope you enjoyed watching the improvement of our full stack application. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe and wish you all a wonderful day.